Mars. It's humanity's next big goal in space, with plans by NASA to put people on its surface sometime in the next two decades. As part of its preparations for a Mars mission, NASA wanted to find out what the effects of extended exposure to microgravity would do to the human body. In order to explore the issue, NASA paid several people thousands of dollars to lay around in bed for several weeks, studying how their muscles atrophied and weakened from a lack of exercise. Today, NASA is definitely not as inspiring as it was in the Apollo era, but we're still inspired to go ahead and find out what a whole week of being a couch uh, bed potato would do to the human body. So once more, we're putting our finest scientists and engineers on the question, and since we have literally none of those, we're going to go ahead and have our resident lab rat earn his cheddar by laying in bed for a week straight. Day 1 I'm a big fan of NASA and anything space related really. I think there's nothing humanity does that's nobler than our quest to understand and explore space. So imagine my excitement when the infographic show told me that they had a challenge for me straight from NASA. I've been forced to live in the wild for three days straight, been homeless for another three days, moved in with my parents for a whole month. When I heard that this next challenge involved NASA, the possibilities were endless. Would I be going to space camp? Maybe to a real live rocket launch? Would I get to meet an astronaut? No. I get to lay in bed for seven days straight, all because somebody over at the office read an article about NASA bed studies and thought, huh, this sounds horrible, let's get the challenge guy to do it. It was probably the narrator. Sometimes in my scripts I force him to pronounce really terrible words and I think he has it in for me. Check out our lightning plus volcano video where I forced him to pronounce the name of every major Icelandic volcano. It wasn't, but that's a great revenge idea. Alright, so as usual, let's go over the rules. Rule number one, no leaving the bed except for bathroom breaks. This does not include a shower, by the way, which means I'm going to have to resort to the old baby wipe shower from my days in the military. Rule number two is I can't move around. I have to replicate the NASA study as closely as possible. I headed on over to NASA.gov and read up on the study, and participants were encouraged to move their upper bodies around, but not their lower bodies. Apparently, astronauts in space mostly use their upper bodies, which kind of makes sense. There's no walking in zero G. And in space, you can use your hands for grabbing onto stuff and pushing off, but legs are kind of useless. Unlike the NASA participants, though, I'm doing this challenge alone. I mean, the girlfriend will be around, but she's got her own life, and no way in hell could infographics pay her enough to lay down for a week straight. I'm pretty sure she would go criminally insane if she wasn't allowed to jog and exercise for seven days in a row. The NASA subjects had other people in the room with them, and I guess that helped pass the time. I even saw a photo of two of the participants playing Connect 4 together, with the game on a small table between their beds. I did some research on what happens to your body when you're stuck in bed, and well, it's mostly not good. Back in the 1900s and earlier, doctors prescribed bed rest for everything from the common cold to decapitation, because, you know, medical science still thought that blowing smoke up someone's bum could help resuscitate them from drowning. That's a fact, and you should look it up. Turns out, though, that getting fresh air and sunshine isn't just something your mother used to say to get you to stop playing video games, but it's actually healthy and beneficial for a body that's recuperating from illness or injury. Obviously, your muscles deteriorate from a lack of activity. Gravity constantly forces your muscles to keep you upright, so they're always getting a workout every time you stand up. Did you know, though, that long bed rest can affect even your bones? Without the stress of keeping you upright, bones lose density and become more prone to breaking. Blood can also pool in your legs, which can potentially lead to things such as blood clots. While immobile, your heart actually beats quicker and pumps blood around the body at lower volumes, which means less oxygen. This is why you can actually feel more tired after loafing around than if you were just engaging in normal activity. There's literally a laundry list of bad stuff that can happen from laying in bed for a week straight, and I don't feel like scaring myself any more than I already have, so I'm just going to end right there. I do need to mention bed sores, though, which typically affects older people who are stuck in bed for months at a time. They're caused by blood pooling and the body not being moved around, and you should absolutely go and do a Google image search of bed sores right now, or not if you like to keep your lunch down. Alright, I've got my TV, laptop, tablet, PlayStation, and cell phone along with several books. I think I'm ready for this. See you guys in a few days. Day 3 I gotta say, I'm not exactly thrilled with this challenge. I remember about a year and a half ago I was approached with the idea of doing crazy challenges for the infographic show. I thought it sounded exciting. Even if my very first one, eat the hottest pepper, was extremely painful and almost sent me to the emergency room. I never really mind the danger or discomfort as long as I'm doing something new and weird and out of the ordinary. Laying in bed for three days, though, has been the single most boring challenge in the history of challenges. My days typically start 
start in the morning with the girlfriend getting up to go work out, coming back to shower and then get ready for work. I have nothing to do so I stay awake to kiss her goodbye for the day and then I just kind of go back to sleep. I've noticed I sleep a lot more now, by the way. I guess it's a side effect of laying around all day. Now I obviously can't leave the bed for food or to walk the dog, but that's okay because modern life has a solution to such trivial problems. I signed up for a dog walking service and I use both Uber Eats and Postmates for food delivery and, well, okay, remember my challenge where I stayed in a bathtub for a day straight? Obviously, I need to sort the issue out with not being able to answer the door. We have a small one bedroom apartment and our bedroom's doors are huge and open right up into the living room. With the doors open, I can literally lay in bed and see the front door, which I have the girlfriend leave unlocked. Then to explain why I can't go to the door to pick up my food or answer it for the dog walker myself, well, I'm not super proud of this, but I had the girlfriend borrow the bottom half of a body cast from the props department of the show she's on. Basically, I could throw the thing on in a hurry and it looks like I have two broken legs. Don't judge me judge the infographic show. I always make sure to send my delivery person or dog walker a note and explain the situation so there's little weirdness as possible. I still very much remember Susan from my don't leave the bathtub for 24 hours challenge, so I'm really trying not to freak any more delivery drivers out. Susan, if you're out there in the internet land, I'm still sorry. I swear, I'm not a creepy weirdo. Alright, so food and dog walking isn't a problem and you know what, everyone so far has been pretty cool about it. They come to the door and they bring me my food to bed and typically say something like, hope you feel better soon, and I mumble something like, yeah, thanks, because I feel like a terrible person for pretending to be disabled. At night, the girlfriend is in charge of cooking, which is a total disaster because she may be a modern, independent woman that don't need no man, but she's a terrible cook. While other little girls were pretending to be princesses, having tea parties and learning to bake cookies, she was doing martial arts and basically training to be a secret government assassin. I'm not going to pretend like that's not kind of really hot, but man, I really wish I could leave the bed to cook. Food though is its own problem. You know what's really hard? To eat every meal lying down. You'd feel like you're halfway to choking every time you swallow and eating something like soup is a disaster in the making. The girlfriend actually banned me from eating liquid food because twice now I've made a mess on myself in the sheets trying to slurp down some soup. She does after all still have to sleep on this bed at night. My hygiene has definitely taken a bit of a dive, but the baby wipes help a lot. I know I've said this before, but if you know anyone deployed overseas, send them baby wipes in your care package. Baby wipes are a godsend for anyone downrange. I totally forgot about brushing my teeth though, because as the girlfriend loves to point out, I often miss the most completely obvious details. I just tell her that that's because I'm a big picture kind of guy, to which she shakes her head and mutters under her breath. I mean, she's not wrong. When I planned our trip to the Bahamas a few years ago, I planned literally everything we do and totally forgot to book a hotel. I only remembered when we landed and were standing in front of the passenger pickup area and she asked me which hotel shuttle was ours. I told her that, well, any of them could be ours if we wanted them to be, and that's the story of how we almost ended up sleeping in the streets of the Bahamas and why I'm no longer in charge of planning trips. Anyways, so I have a bowl and a bottle of water for brushing my teeth, which the girlfriend has to dump after every time I use it. I reminded her that one day when I'm old and decrepit, she would have to do this for me every day, and she kind of just stared at me for a moment. I swear I could see her doing the mental math and calculating if I was worth the investment. I might seriously need to look into this marriage thing. Nothing else to report, just a lot of boredom and weirdness trying to do everyday tasks when you're stuck in bed. Zero out of ten would not recommend. See you at the end of this. Day 7 Well, I feel like I've been saying this more lately, but I'm glad that challenge is over. I literally leapt for joy when my final hour was up, and then because I hadn't used my legs for a week, I immediately fell over and twisted my ankle. On the way down, I knocked my head against the nightstand hard enough to get a bit dizzy. Because I have a history of concussions from my years overseas, the girlfriend insisted on taking me to the ER, so I hobbled to the car, leaning on her the entire way. Not only was my ankle pretty sprained, but I could barely keep myself upright due to my legs being so weak. Also, the fact that the blood now had to go uphill to get to my brain for the first time in seven days forced my heart to work harder, and it felt like a racehorse in my chest. I honestly thought for a little bit that I'd have a heart attack. I really did not expect the impact that laying in bed for seven days would have on me physically. I thought at best it'd just be a bit weak, but I was having serious issues. At the ER, the doctor said my blood pressure was way over, and he was seriously concerned by how weak I was. I really 
really didn't want to tell him about what I'd done for a week or why I did it, but the girlfriend was so concerned she basically fessed up to the whole thing. So great, I'm basically now a weird story that the doctors and nurses at my local hospital tell each other every day now. Hey, remember that guy that came in with a busted head and twisted ankle? Yeah, he's some sort of YouTube weirdo or something? Honestly, dignity does not come high on the list of employee benefits you get for working for the infographic show. Alright, my ankle's going to take a while to heal and my head will be fine eventually. The doctor warned me against any more laying in bed though, and recommended I slowly start to exercise again, starting with things like walking around the block. He also basically gave me the spiel on the same warning of what laying all day could do to your body that I'd already read online. But he was familiar with the NASA study and pointed out that they had trained medical professionals on hand during the entire length of the study. Jeez. Point taken. Other than my very inglorious ending to this challenge though, how was the rest of my week? Well in a word, boring. In several more words, the most boring week of my life. I remember years ago on a deployment, me and a partner laid under a camo net on the side of a hill for 36 hours straight, just watching the backside of a remote village. All we did was watch and count the number of people in the village, taking careful notes of who went where and for how long. Just hours and hours and hours of watching, and you know what? That was more exciting than laying in bed for seven freaking days in a row. You think with access to the internet, video games, and food delivery on demand, laying around wouldn't be that hard but let me tell you, there's only so many consecutive games of XCOM 2 Long War you can play before you're begging for an actual alien invasion so you have a reason to run out of your bed. There's only so many cat videos, meme videos, and old Star Trek The Next Generation episodes that you can watch before you're just aching for something physical to do. At one point I was fantasizing about a burglar breaking into the house, practically wishing for it to happen, just so I had an excuse to leave the bed. My bed, which I normally have an excellent relationship with because it's warm, cozy, and just the right level of both firmness and softness became my prison. I yearned to feel the cold wooden floor of our apartment under my feet. I even envied the girlfriend every time she went outside to go for a jog. And if you've been following these challenge episodes, then I've already made my position on running very clear to you. In short, spending a week in bed laying down the entire time is a different type of hell. Eating became a weird, very stressful activity, and you always feel like you might choke. Forget about soup or anything saucy, unless you want to make a mess all over yourself. The physical effects were probably the worst though. I felt fatigued all the time, and after the week was up, I could barely walk and keep myself up. I could literally feel the blood pumping in my head, and my heart felt like it was going to call it quits, just from the stress of having to pump blood against the force of gravity again. I applaud the brave men and women who laid in bed for 90 days so NASA could study the effects of microgravity on the human body and see why they got paid so well for it too. For me though, I'm happy with my 8 hours every night, though I think I'm gonna give the couch a try for a few days. Me and my bed need a break from each other right now. I know it was you that did this to me, narrator. This isn't over by a long shot. You know I heard there's a town in Wales by the name of Sanvai Puswengus Guger Hundropus Santosilio Gokoko, and I think we should do an entire episode on it. I think I need to get paid more too. If you like this video and want to see more, and let's face it, of course you did, then click on this video which is funny and entertaining. Or this video which is entertaining and funny. We'll leave the choice of which up to you, since we know you're smart and clever enough to make the right decision.